Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in this day. Let us just go to the throne of grace in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the inspiration of your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Almighty God, for dwelling in us, living in us, God. We give you glory. We give you honor, God. We thank you for being our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And today, God, we thank you. We praise you for your wisdom, your knowledge, and Lord, and your understanding. Thank you, Lord, and we give you glory and honor. In the precious name of Jesus, the name that is above every other name, and we thank you for that wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, praise God, and we worship God again. We always worship God and magnify God because he is worthy to be praised. Well, today we are teaching on the judgment seat of Christ. The judgment seat of Christ. And uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10 says, We must all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Now the judgment seat of Christ is different from the judgment seat of God. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 12 says, John said, I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. The book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead, which were judged out of those things, which was written in the book of life according to their works. Now the judgment seat of Christ is the first judgment. First Peter chapter four and verse 17 says, the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. This is the first judgment. Are we ready to be judged? When we pass the first judgment, God said this time has come that the house of the Lord, the believer, must be judged first. Again, are we ready to be judged by God's holiness, by God's righteousness? Are we ready to be judged by Christ, the first judgment? 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 10 says, We all, we all, we all, every person upon the face of this earth will stand before God one day and give an account for the deeds that are done in your body. And I advise you, my friend, to set your house in order because the end is near. The Bible says that we all, we all must Stand before the judgment seat of Christ to be judged. We all. The day is coming. It is upon us. We're not going to be in this world much longer. All the signs of being fulfilled. Judgment is upon us. It is time. Jesus said it's time for the church to be judged. The judgment seat of Christ gives us, gives the believer space to repent. See, when Christ judges us according to our righteousness and our holiness, and he convict us of what we are doing wrong, it's not pleasing in his sight. He will give us time to repent. But the judgment seat of God, which is called the white phone judgment, will not give us space to repent. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 21, it says, I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Now, when I said the fornication, most of us just think of one saying, no, no fornication can be gossip and criticize the fault find and walking out of love. Uh, it can go on and on. Uh, uh, not treating each other correctly the way that God commanded us to treat each other. 
we will be judged. We are living in a season of the space to repent. Every born again believer, save or unsaved, you have space to repent and get make Jesus Christ Lord of your life. And the believer has space to repent now and set your house in order, get your life right. Whatever the Holy Spirit is convicting you of, for years you just overlooked it. You you knew that you was not pleasing in God's sight or doing things that's not pleasing to God, but yet you just continue doing the same thing over and over and over. But you know there's coming a time when everything will come to an end. We are living in this season now that you have space to repent before we stand before the white throne judgment. And the book of life is open. You ever thought about what is by your name, what kind of life you've been living? The book of life, that great and mighty day, will come upon us. And we all will stand before the white throne judgment of life. And when that book is open and your name is called, will you have confidence? Will you have boldness? that you know that you have lived according to the will of God upon earth? Will you have great, great uh, uh, confidence that, you know, when the book of life is open, I'm gonna be all right. When the book of life is open, there's nothing against my life that will displease me God. We have space to get our life right, I'm telling you. Once you stand before the white throne judgment, it's all over. Begging and crying and asking God for another chance is not going to happen. But when you stand before the judgment seat of Christ, which we're standing before the judgment, judgment seat of Christ, we have space. You have time. God said, I'm giving you space to repent. I'm giving you space to change your life. But when I become your judge, not your savior, just your judge. It's over. Now, when that book of life is open, it's determined whether you're going to heaven or hell. It's in the book. He said, the time is come for Jesus Christ to sanctify and purify the church. Jesus Christ was sent to purify the church, to build God a church, a peculiar church, a glorious church. Prepare a church that will meet God, will be qualified and sanctified and purified to meet the Lord in the air. We're supposed to meet him in the air. And Jesus, uh, uh, a judgment seat of Jesus is preparing us, giving us space to repent. Because one day you and I will leave this earth to meet Jesus in the air. And the Bible said, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ, what a day, shall rise first. Isn't that something? Verse 17 says, then we which are alive and remain, shall be cut up together with the dead. We that will remain on earth shall be cut up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. Can you imagine that one day your spirit is going to meet the Lord in the air? <laughs> and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Judgment must begin at the house of the Lord first. The time has come for Jesus to sanctify and purify the church to meet the Lord in the air. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> Jesus this is his job. We use whatever method that he 
choose to use to get the church attention because he was sent to earth to build a church, a mercurial church, a church that would represent the Lord upon this earth. To build a church, he called it a glorious church, sanctified church, purified church, a church that have made herself ready, a church that have taken off the old person and old you, the old man, the Bible says, and put on the new you. A church that loved the Lord thy God with all their heart, with all your soul, and all your mind. He's coming back for the church. And Jesus is judging the church. He's preparing the church. He's giving the church space to repent. But he said the time has come for the church to be sanctified and purified to meet God, to meet the Lord in the air. Huh, the purifying judgment of God to sanctify and cleanse the church, to meet the Lord in the air, is God, Jesus. Jesus will use whatever he need to do, now and permit upon this earth to sanctify the church and to get the church attention. I know that Jesus calls whatever going on now on this earth, it wasn't set by the devil. No, it's impossible. How can the devil have that kind of power? If you read the Old Testament, when God wanted to get his people attention, he knew there's one way. I've been, you know, convicting the church. I've been dealing with the church. But somehow or another, because of my goodness and my wrath didn't fall upon them, they kept on doing the same thing over and over. He said, but when I allow certain things to hit the church, to hit the earth, I get the church attention. Why I have to send or uh, 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 allow a spirit to come upon the church in order to get the church attention? But seem like the church doesn't love God just enough to obey him, to thank him for his mercy. The Bible says we present our body by the mercy of God for what all what he has done. But why did it take a, a tragedy to hit earth from God for the church to, to turn their attention or focus upon God? Why can't we focus on God without anything going on just because he is God, just because he's our Lord, just because he's our Savior? Why does such tragedy have to hit the earth before God's people, whom he called out of darkness, translated us into the kingdom of his dear son? Why did he have to send such tragedy thing on earth to get the church's attention? But he would do and use whatever it takes to prepare us to meet our Lord and Savior in the air. And, you know, every time God allows something to hit the church on earth, what happened? We all get, you know, we come up, have a temporary holiness, a temporary sanctifying. Oh, my temporary love for God, and, and we just honor God, and it's all about God. But soon as the God allow that thing to lift, and about two or three months, we back into that same old way of living, back into that same old way of treating each other, back into to doing the same old thing until something else hit again. Then soon as something hit, the church gets so sanctified, they get so holy, they love God so much until it's lifted up. God said, you worship me just with your lips, you tell me that you love me. Just with your lips, you stand up and say, he that dwells in the secret place of the most high God shall abide under the shadow of the almighty God. Oh, we just abide under the shadow of the almighty God. Oh, are you abiding there because you want protection? Are you abiding there because you love God? 
Examine yourself. Why all of a sudden Psalm 91 is so important to you? It's been in your Bible all the time. Why? What happened? Oh, what, what happened? How did it get your attention? Why couldn't Psalm 91 get your attention before anything happened? Why couldn't you have it? Why we didn't have that same testimony that we dwell in the secret place of the Most High God under the shadow of the Almighty God? Why? <clears throat> it's been in your Bible and my Bible all this time. See, when we, when things, let's put it this way, when things are going well for the believer, oh my God. The pastor always said to us that it's the dangerous time in a believer's life. My God, all your bills are paid. Everything is going well. See, like doors are being opened for the believer. He said, when this happens, the believer tends to feel more and more secure within yourself. But now you don't feel secure within yourself. You feel secure within Psalm 91. But when things are going well, we tend to cease to pray. But now, since all of this is going on, hey, God don't have to look for you to pray. You just pray now. See, when things are going wrong, all of a sudden, God understands everything. God understands your shortcoming. God understands that you don't have time to pray. God understands everything when things are going well. But when God allows something to hit the earth, oh, we can find time now. But whatever it takes for Jesus Christ to sanctify and purify his church, he will allow it and he will permit it. Because his mission is to sanctify a glorious church. So when the Lord returns, God will be proud of how his son sanctify a church to present to him a glorious church. And whatever Jesus has to do and allow him to permit on earth, he will do just that. As a, guess what? It's absolutely nothing that you and I can do about it. This is his earth. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And all they that dwell in it, every person, great and small, the Bible says every person, the poor person, the rich person, the in between, is going to stand before God and give an account for the deeds that are done in your life. The believer tend to feel more and more secure within himself. Oh my God. Oh, we just want to get back to church. But when the doors was open, did you want to get to church like you want to get to church now? Oh, when they gonna let us back in church? Oh, they keeping us out of church. Well, these doors have been open for a year. Wednesday night, Sunday morning, he don't show up. Once a week you show up. But now, since the doors are closed, somehow or another you want to come to church. Isn't that something? Isn't that really something? God said, you want to go to church now? I wonder why you want to go to church. Because I'll allow and permit a situation on earth that I, only God Almighty can stop. But now you want to go to church. But all the other time, you don't have time to go to church. God understand my heart. It don't take all this to go to church. I don't have to go to church every week. I don't have to go to Sunday school. Uh, people just stop going to Sunday school. Sunday school is not important anymore. But all of a sudden, now you're going to come to church. You're going to Sunday school. You're coming to Wednesday night. You come to every other night that the church is open for a season until we give birth in our spirit. Hallelujah. Who God is. Hallelujah. And stop treating him like you treat each other. He is God. He's not your sister. You get mad at your sister. You get mad at your husband. He's not your husband. This, he is God. The creator of the universe. And we treat him, we treat him, we treat him like he's a human being. We love him sometimes when he's good to us. He's always good to us. 
But when, when things are going wrong, you know, things that you cannot handle yourself, all of a sudden he is your Lord. He is your Savior. Well, he was there all the time. It's just with you. You didn't see him that way until he allowed tragedy to come in your life. See, personally, God would allow things to come in your life that you have no way out. Then he'll get your attention. Now I got your attention, but until then, we serve God just like we serve each other. Amen. As long as we treat each other good, okay, I serve you good, but anything go wrong, I don't serve you anymore. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all of our heart, and lean not to thy own understanding. Hmm. Lord, I trust you now. Why? I can't figure this out. I trust you now with all my heart. I, oh, no, I trust Psalm 91 with all of my heart. He said, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct the path. When things are going well with the believer, the believer tends to partake of the world more and more. You look at the church, you can't tell the church from the world now. They party, they drink, they do everything just like the world. But things was going well for them. And when things are going well for the believer, for the church, they tend to dabble in the world and live too close to the world. They tend to pick up the world habit. And all of a sudden, you pick up the world habit. It's okay now. It's okay now. We can do this. We can act like the world. We can do stuff. But I wonder, are you acting like the world now? Oh, no, go ahead and do your thing. Do your party and, and, and all that belly rubbing you're doing and saying that it's okay. And, and, and I don't think they'll have belly rubbing in heaven. I don't think you plan on going there because you're going to be a sad person because Jesus is not going to have a dance with you. He's coming back for holy people. He's coming back for sanctified people. See, when things are going well, we tend to, to live so close to the world. And because we're living close to the world and nothing is going on, we think God is agreeing with us. Thank God is just waking his eye. We can do what we want to. And I'm telling you, sisters and brothers, there's a day coming that we all going to stand before God. Uh, God is a holy God. God, not a, 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 a God that's a, a God, a hypocrite in God. He's a holy God. He's a pure God. He's a righteous God. That's what the Bible says. We all going to stand before him. You're going to give an account for the deeds that are done in your body. You're going to give an account for every lie that you told that you had not repented. For you're going to give an account for how you treat each other if you do not change. We are going to stand before God. And I say, my friend, God's going to look in a lot of our eyes. He said, I never knew you. Because you served me uh, though I was a, a, a hypocrite. You served me though I was a sinner. You represent me like as though I were a sinner. I'm a holy God. God didn't call me to belly rub. He called me to lift up my holy hands and worship and praise and magnify him and give him the glory. He never called me to continue. I, I used to do these things when I was in the world. How can I come out of the world and continue doing the same thing in church? Something had to be wrong with that picture that I can come out of the world from days of the nightclub and drinking and doing all the nine yards. Then I can come to church after I'm saved for about five or ten years. All of a sudden, I jump back into my old way. The Bible said, just like a dog turned into his own vomit. That once you was cleaned up, now you're going back to the old stuff that you used to do. But the Bible said, and my Bible said, the time has come that judgment is going to begin at the house of the Lord. God has given us space. He's given us space to repent. You can continue. Anybody can justify the Bible. Anybody can say this is okay. But it's God convinced. God said, man, that's one thing our pastor always used to say. He said, man can always co convince himself that this is right. He said, but tell me one thing. Is, that, is God convinced that it's okay for you to act like the world? Okay for you to party like the world? Okay for you to drink and do all these things like the world? But see, when you get, I, I, I wonder now, how much party are you doing? No, we laying under Psalm 91 now. Hey, don't drink it. Why? 
We knew it was wrong all the time. We just tend to justify ourselves when things are going well to satisfy the flesh. Flesh will never bring you nothing but heartache. Never. Oh my God. So we read this 7, verse 17. God said, Come out! Come out from among them! And be ye separated, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean things. And I will receive you. That been in your Bible all the time. He said, come out. Oh, we came out. We was out for about five or ten years. But all of that, Lord, we, we, get, we got to do something now. So we decided to go back in among them. The Bible said, come out. But are you out now? Oh, yeah, we out now. Well, stay out. Stay out. Verse 18 says, and the Lord will receive you and be a father. That's <laughs> awesome unto you, and you shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord. Oh my God. This is the idea of God want to be our Father. Do you know who God is? Mighty God, awesome God. Good God. You're always helping us. See, a lot of times we forget. Things going so well, sometimes we forget how good God been to us. Hallelujah. Sometimes when things go well, we forget all the nights that we laid before God. And God met that need. When things go well, we tend to forget that He is the Lord our God, our Holy God. Why do God have to send hard times to us to cleanse us up? amazing. Why do we have to be treated like slaves to the world, to problem and situation, in order for God to get our attention? Why did God have to always allow and permit trouble to come into your life to get your attention? Why can't he get our attention just by knowing his love, his mercy, what can his mercy get our attention? What can his grace get our attention? We can what he's done for us, he's shedding his blood for us to redeem us. Why can't redemption get our attention? Why it have to be something that comes into our life that we have to suffer through and all of a sudden we realize, oh, oh, he's God. But thank God, God loves us so much. He'll do whatever it takes to prepare us to meet the Lord in the air. God has given us space to repent. Please do not forfeit your opportunity to get your life right with God. Because when you stand before the right on judgment, your belly ache and your slick talk is not going to help you. Sad thing when God look you in your eyes and tell you, depart from me. I never knew you. God bless you. And it's my prayer that you would take this time out, that you are home, dwelling in the secret place of the Most High God, allow the Most Holy God, the Almighty God, to change you, prepare you to meet the Lord in the air, because one day we all are going to meet him in the air, and we all will stand before the white throne judgment to be judged. God bless you. Amen.